Okay, let me call the floor to order. Good day to everyone, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> the, um, <coughs> thanks for the distinguished uh, panelists today, member of the press, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We, have <coughs> we are holding the forum today. Uh, on next Monday is the December 10th, which marks the 70th anniversary of International Human Rights Day. To commemorate that uh, moment, and also to support the Tuidang movement in China, and the recent House Resolution 932, we are holding this forum today. Thanks everyone to come to attend. One more time, please uh, turn off your cell phones or turn to the vibrate mode. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, <coughs> as you probably know that uh, uh, the member of the Congress are very busy. Uh, <coughs> we're gonna proceed with the forum. If there's a member is coming, we probably will have him or hers to speak uh, immediately right away. <coughs> uh, we have two major themes today. One is uh, the persecutions of uh, human rights, particularly uh, against Falun Gong in China and the communist crime. That's the first part. I hope to start that uh, about 30 minutes first, then followed by this encouraging trade out movement and the recent uh, Sino-US relations and the ultimate goal of communism. We will start with that. Hopefully we can do that. <coughs> then, uh, so we will have uh, speakers come up. Then, then after we would swap for another, okay, group of uh, speakers. The, <coughs> um, during the past 19 years, uh, the Chinese Communist Party, led by the former head, Jiang Zemin, has uh, launched a, a very brutal, evil crackdown on Falun Gong. Uh, they have abused its government executive branches, military units, and legal assistance to throw several millions of innocent, peaceful, mainstream Falun Gong practitioners in China into prisons, labor camps, black jails, detention centers, brainwash centers, and mental hospitals. All of them are prisoner of conscience and have suffered inhuman treatments and tortures and more than 100 different uh, torture methods found in our history. Several thousands were confirmed dead under police custody and the most astonishing crime has been the state orchestrated forced organ harvesting from living Falun Gong practitioner and ethnic groups. Also, during the past 69 years of ruling, Chinese Communist Party has caused 80 million unnatural death in China, which is more than the casualty of World War I and World War II combined. More than half of Chinese citizens were directly persecuted one way or the other through a dozen of major political movements in the past 69 years. Tui Dang literally means withdrawal from Communist Party and its affiliates, provides Chinese people the, the chance to break free from Chinese Communist Party, its crimes, what it stands for, and its control. So Tui Dang allowed Chinese people to renounce the oath they took to give their blood, life, and to resolutely obey communists. Regardless of religions, genders, language, age, place of birth, and ethnicity, 320 million Chinese citizens have cut ties with communism in the past 14 years. The peaceful trade on movement is not a political movement and does not provide political solution. However, it frees in the hearts and minds of Chinese people and provide a vision of Chinese and the whole world, a renewed China without communism, and hopefully a renewed world without communism. Today we are very honored and happy to have uh, 
high level distinguished panelists today to share their views on the, on the deteriorating human rights in China or heinous communist crimes or the trade-off movement of the recent Sino-US relations. Okay, uh, uh, let me first call the, uh, the victims of uh, Falun Gong is to stand up. Uh, you have the name place here, uh, Dr. <coughs> Wang and President Yi. Come up here too. Okay. So as I mentioned that we, got, we are going to proceed uh, first to commemorate the Human Rights Day with sharing with you the human rights abuses, particularly on Falun Gong in the past uh, 19 years. Uh, I want to turn the floor to Dr. Wei Huang, who is the spokesperson of uh, Falun Gong uh, Practitioner Association of Washington, D.C., and he's the uh, sci scientist uh, in NASA got us fly centers, Dr. Wang. Thank you, pr Professor Nye, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As uh, Professor Nye mentioned that next week, on December 10th, marks the 70th, 70th International Human Rights Day. And here I'm going to update you the ongoing 19-year-long persecution of Falun Gong by the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. And as many of you know that since July 20th, 1999, CCP initiated this persecution of Falun Gong. Up to today, based on the Minghui website, there are at least seven, uh, sorry, 4,258 practitioners are killed due to this persecution with all the detailed information how they were killed. But there are many we don't know yet. So from a recent report by a magazine, an online magazine called The Bitter Winter in Italy, they acquired this interna internal document issued by the 16th office of Liaoning province, China. It shows that CCP has started another cycle of severe persecution of Falun Gong practitioners. For example, again from the Minghui website, on December 9th this year, just last month, there were at least 100, uh, 119 practitioners kidnapped in Harbin and the Daqing cities of Heilongjiang province. And also from January to November 2018, there are at least 3,944 Falun Gong practitioners kidnapped, and more than 380 of them were sentenced to jail term, long jail term, around the whole China. So all this indicates uh, the persecution of Falun Gong in China is very severe still, even after so many years. Not to mention, we just saw this 22-minute uh, video about the forced organ harvesting. That still also happened. And also many practitioners are still missing. If you go to the Minghui website, there are at least documented more than 2,000. But there are many people who we don't even collect their names. So today, we invited several Falun Gong practitioners to share their stories, what happened to them. Now, I don't want to take too much time. First, we, let's have uh, Ms. Cindy Xu, or Xu Xinyang, accompanied by her mother, Shi Li Hua, to share about her story. Uh, Xu Xinyang, I'm 17 years old. I come to United States as a refugee. I'm now living in Rockville. I'm studying in Rachel Montgomery High School. I'm learning English. 1999年7月20日,江殖民下达命令,全国范围内打压法轮功,抓捕了很多按真山人修炼的好人。我的家庭也因此受到迫害。On July 20, 1999, a nationwide crackdown on Falun Gong started under Jiang Zemin's order, and many practitioners were arrested due to their cultivation following the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. My family was also persecuted. My father, 
在监狱里，我的爸爸遭受了很多酷刑。My dad, Xu Dawei, and mom turned to get clarification materials in order to tell the truth to the people who were cheated by the Chinese government. Due to this, they were arrested by police in February 2001. My dad was sentenced to eight years in prison, and he suffered a lot of torture in there. 那时我的妈妈刚刚怀孕，两个大个子的警察狠狠地用手打妈妈的头和脸。用大皮鞋抽打妈妈的后背，妈妈说被打得晕头转向，耳朵嗡嗡的响，直到呕吐，还强迫她蹲了一宿。后来妈妈因为怀孕才躲过一劫，被取报候审。在我出生四个月的时候，我的妈妈再次被抓捕，九天后被迫害的奄奄一息的妈妈才被释放回家。Despite my mom was pregnant with me at that time, two big policemen hit my mom's head and face with their hands and beat her back with big leather shoes. My mom was beaten so hard that she was in dizziness and ear ringing until vomiting. She was forced to squat for a whole night. Later, my mom was released on bail because of the pregnancy. But four months after I was born, my mom was arrested again. And at verge of dying, my mom was released home after being persecuted for nine days. My dad, because he did not give up his faith, was sent to four prisons. In my memory, it is about when I was seven years old. I first saw my dad in prison. He saw me and wanted to hug me, but I did not know him. I was afraid of him. 躲到了妈妈的怀里，没有让爸爸抱我，这成了我终身的遗憾。My dad was transferred within four prisons for continual persecution because he did not give up his beliefs. In my memory, I saw my dad for the first time in prison when I was seven years old. He wanted to hold me, but I was scared and tied behind my mom. I refused to let him hold me because I never had a chance to know him. This became my lifelong regret. 我八岁的时候，我的爸爸被关押了整整八年的时间。回到家里，我不敢靠近他，因为他全身都是伤痕，呼吸困难。目光呆滞，一阵清醒，一阵糊涂。第十三天的时候，我的爸爸在监狱里抢救无效，永远离开了我和妈妈。When I was eight years old, my dad was released at the home after being detained for eight years. I didn't dare to approach him because his whole body was scarred. He could barely barely breathe and in half unconscious condition. My dad died in the hospital after being treated for thirteen days. 从八岁之后，我就再也没有稳定的生活，因为爸爸被迫害死，妈妈到很多部门去控告上访，无法把我带在身边。我都住在学校里，很长时间见不到妈妈。读小学三年级时，我已被迫转了三个学校。I had a stable life since I was eight years old. Because my dad was persecuted to death, my mom had to go to many Dutch departments for petition. She couldn't take me with her. I had to live in the school, and I couldn't see my mom for a long time. I was forced to transfer to three different schools when I was in the third grade of elementary school. 我第四个学校的校长、老师大部分都是法轮功学员，我觉得他们就像我的亲人一样，非常关心、照顾着我。可是，恐惧和惊吓并没有远离我。我记得在我过生日的前一天，老师、校长都被警察抓走了，我和一部分同学就想办法逃出了学校。从那天以后。有一段时间，我一直在噩梦中惊醒，晚上睡觉必须有人握住我的手才能睡着。The principal and most teachers of my fourth school are Falun Gong practitioners. Although they were like my family members and always helped and looked after me, fear and frighten were always with me. 
I remember the day before my birthday. The principal and the teachers were taken away by the police. Some of my classmates and I managed to flee away the school. From that day on, for quite a while, I would suddenly awake from a nightmare and could not go to bed unless someone held my hands to comfort me. 后来我听说我的很多同学都被警察带走了，其中有个八卦男的同学，被警察带走了很多天。警察四天没让他睡觉，让他指控老师，让他说出老师都跟什么人接触，然后给老师请假罪名。他吓坏了，回家精神崩溃死了。就这样，我最喜欢的学校都上不成了，因为爸爸的事情，警察通缉我妈妈；因为学校的事情，警察也找我，我和妈妈居无定所，流离失所。The police did not let him sleep for four days unless he could accuse his, his teacher. They asked him to disclose the teacher's contents in order to impose a crime on the teacher. He was so frightened and died after release back home. Under such a situation, I could not attend my favorite school at all at, uh, anymore. Police were chasing my mom due to my dad's case. And I was wanted due to my school situation. Both my mom and I had to had no place to live and had to displace. 在我十二岁那年，我的妈妈带着我逃亡到泰国。在泰国，我们也没有摆去恐怖、恐惧。我和妈妈差一点被泰国警察抓到移民监狱。When I was 12 years old, my mom and I fled to Thailand. In Thailand, we were not out of the fear either. My mom was almost put into the immigration jail by the Thai police. 很幸运的是，我和妈妈被联合国难民机构安置，于去年来到了美国。这里是信仰自由的国家，在这里我不用害怕警察带走妈妈，也不用怕自己遭受酷刑、恐怖。恐惧变成孤儿，可是这场残酷的迫害还没有结束。在中国还有很多和我一样遭遇的孩子，他们没有我这样的幸运逃到逃亡到美国。我希望更多的人站在正义一边，帮助结束这场不公的迫害，长达十九年的迫害。谢谢大家。Fortunately, my mom and I were resettled by the UN Refugee Agency and came to the United States last year. This is a country with freedom of belief. In here, I'm finally not afraid of the police who would take my mom away, and I don't have to fear that I would be tortured, horrified, or orphaned. However, this cultural persecution is still not over yet. There are still many children in China suffered the same as me. I hope more people will stand on the side of justice and help end this injustice, which has already lasted for 19 years. Thank you. 谢谢。呀， 呃， 我我 ，I need to interrupt. Uh, <coughs> it's my great honor to have uh, Congressman Daniel Rauterbarger here. He's on the back. Uh, uh, let, let me introduce him. Uh, congressman Daniel Rauterbarger is a senior congressman for 30 years since 1989. Then he chaired the House Foreign Affairs Subcommittee <coughs> on Europe and Emerging Threats in 1980s. He served as the President Ronald Reagan's senior speechwriter. He's the most powerful uh, and forceful leader at the Congress on human rights, national security, freedom, and communist crimes. And <clears throat> in his uh, 2012 hearing, he commented on the, uh, the organ harvest in the most ghoulish, he said, the most ghoulish manifestation of uh, gangsterism is the forced harvest of organ of the political prisoners and the religious followers that arrest particularly on Falun Gong. To reap a body open of prisoner of conscience is about the most monstrous crime that I can conceive of. Six months ago, he introduced uh, House Resolutions 932, expressed the solidarity with uh, the movement 
whereby Chinese citizens renounce the tie to the Chinese Communist Party and its affiliates and calling for an immediately ends on the campaigns to persecute Falun Gong pra practitioners. On behalf of millions of uh, Tuidang volunteer, President Yi of the Tuidang Center of New York wishes to honor him and present him an appreciation award, a plaque. The citation, I want to read the citation. Here, stand here. I, I want to read the citation. With highest respect and appreciation, salute to Honorable Congressman Daniel Rotterbacher, a true hero and great leader at the U.S. Capitol on the Tuidang Movement in China, the Global Tuidang Center, December 4th, 2018. Well, thank you so much. God bless you. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I should. Uh, 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 yeah. I I should be giving this award to you, and to you. <laughs> Now, seriously, uh, over my time uh, here in Congress, uh, yes, I've had people who I was able to work with to conspire against these tyrannical regimes in various parts of the world, and uh, people like John Linchowski, who is with us today, of course, and we dedicated our lives to this because we knew, not just because we were benevolent souls ourselves, but also because we are patriots of America in that we know that it's, it's the people who are struggling for freedom throughout the world are our greatest allies uh, for peace and prosperity for the people of the United States. And uh, I will say the Falun Gong and the Tridong movement has been such a great inspiration to me over the years because I have realized, as you realize, those people who hold China in an iron grip are not just the oppressors of their own people, they are villains in the world. They are villains for the planet. And those villains threaten all of us if, with their power and authority. The people of China are our greatest ally in trying to make sure that a villainous regime does not go to war, physical war, with the people of the United States. So your courage always gave me hope. And when I would go on the... Uh, back lawn and every year for the for your big rallies for the Falun Gong the you know you were inspiring me not the other way around the fact is that uh, uh, we we are now soulmates with the people of China either you succeed at the grassroots level and you eliminate this horrible regime that is so oppressive and so corrupt that you not only will be holding back the whole planet in the sense of what we could do throughout the planet, but you are putting in jeopardy by leaving this regime in place. You're putting in jeopardy all of us because I do believe with something as evil as going on in China that eventually that would mean some kind of armed conflict. The people of China are our greatest allies in maintaining that peace and defeating that enemy without armed conflict. So that, uh, I've known that all along. John Lachowski and I knew that about the Soviet Union and uh, uh, we, uh, over the years, backed those people who were struggling against the Soviet Union and brought it down. And I might add that uh, uh, John here was vilified for his efforts. Now, I didn't win my reelection, but I want you to know I'm not upset about it. Uh, I, uh, in fact, I sort of, sort of feel like I'm free at last uh, after, after 30 years of anything that I would do would be looked at with a microscope to try to see if they could say, find something bad to say or some, you know, some way to, to bring me down. Well, I will continue this fight because, and I will continue to be your friend I don't know exactly what positions I will hold. I don't know if I will go with the administration or what I will be doing. But you know that I will be on your side. Uh, years ago, I had an experience that uh, told me about this, about not leaving people behind. And uh, I uh, was sent to Vietnam, not in the military, but in another, uh, another way. And I was in the Central Highlands with the Mountain Yard tribesmen. 
1967, and I was only 19 years old at the time. And I remember that uh, they gave me a, a bracelet. I know these these people live in tribal areas and jungle and everything. And uh, one group I was with gave me a bracelet that I had around my arm, right here. And I, uh, when I left Vietnam a few months later, and uh, I had that bracelet to remind me. But I thought, even then, I knew we were going to lose that war because we did not have, we were not, and not aimed at the dynamics of reaching out to regular people in Vietnam. We did not do that. We actually had powerful interest groups that we allied ourselves with. And when I left, I knew that war would go on and that we would lose. And I cried all night long. When I, on the way back, I stopped by Ho Hawaii and uh, was there. And I never remember, I, I was digging in the sand and I came here on, on Hawaii, digging the sand, and you come to a point and you realize there is no beach in Honolulu. It's all a phony beach. It was sand that was covered up of black rock. And I said to myself, well, what is real in this world? What is real in this world? And I knew that so many more people would die before we settled what was going on in Vietnam. Well. Uh, as time went on, I decided I was not going to support the war, and I'll, I had gone on for another year or so. But I realized this is, it was dis, the disunity in our own country was so so bad that I felt that it was actually more harmful for us to quote lose that war uh, uh, than um, more. It would be more harmful for us to keep that war going and keep the division going than to just walk away. And I was in a shower when I made that decision. I was actually taking a shower. I'll never forget this moment in my whole life. And the minute I said, we can't fight this war anymore. It's dividing us. It's weakening us rather than strengthening us. At that moment, that metal bracelet that these Mountain Yard tribesmen uh, had given to me broke. And I looked down, and it was a drain, and in the drain uh, were those, was that bracelet, and the water was going down the drain. And I said, what's going to happen to those brave people who we convinced, and I convinced, to side with America? I never forgot that moment. You were the ones who gave me hope to realize that there are people in China and everywhere that we can ally ourselves with. And we will not, I will never forget, and I will never be parted from the Falun Gong and your wonderful efforts to bring peace to the world and freedom to the people of China. It's what makes a difference for everyone, especially uh, we in America who claim to believe in freedom as our, ultimate, as our ultimate value. You are our allies, and, and you can count on me. I may not be a congressman anymore, but I'll be working with John we're going to stick with our, with our friends and the friends of freedom wherever they are in the planet. So thank you very much for this award. I give you the Rohrbacher Award. God bless. We also have uh, the Tweedang Center also write a comprehensive report. Tweedang Movement oh, wow. documents all the evidence of uh, 300 million uh, courageous Chinese citizens cut in tie from communism. We want to present that to you. This is our list, our, our list of allies, right? Yes. Our list of. This is the, uh, yeah, you know, read the title of the report is Declare the Victory Over the Unrestricted Warfare Waged by the Chinese Communist Party. We're going to win. We're going to okay. win. Freedom will win. Yes. The American people will win, yes. and they will be standing right next to our Chinese friends who are so courageous to have taken the stand. Yeah, to the cable TV in Liaoning province. Near one hour and 20 minutes, the broadcast helped so many local people understand the persecution and the truth. 
Following the broadcast, CCP arrested my sister and her husband. She was sentenced seven years in Liaoning Province Women Prison. 鉴于监狱里恶警指使市民犯人对他轮番疯狂殴打，期间昏厥，一夜之间，姐姐被殴打成瘸子，不能走路，胳膊被骨被打骨折两次。在七年慢慢迫害中，他被迫害出乳房恶性病变，多次被关进小号，判专人看管，不给食物，不许睡觉。殴打、体罚、致使其病情恶化，直到七年期满，导致乳腺癌晚期，回家仅一年，就在二零一四年凄惨离世。In the prison, police command four prisoners by turns to beat her up until she lost consciousness. Overnight, my sister turned into a handicapped person. She was unable to walk. Her arm bones were fractured, fract fractured twice. During her seven-year sentence, police locked her into a dark cell, not allowed to sleep, not allowed to have food, and had a prolonged punishment. Her braces were brutally beaten until faster and bleeding. Her breath, her breath situation was neglected and eventually turned into breast cancer. My sister passed away in 2014, only one year after back home. 我离开马神家劳教所后，也没有获得真正的自由，因为拒绝当地警局和六幺六一零让我去报道的要求，我依然被便衣跟踪和邻居监视。为了活命，我于二零一一年底逃到海外。在获得自由很长一段时间后，心里都留有这种暴政迫害的阴影。即使在最温暖的阳光下，想起马山家的残暴，也会突然感到不寒而栗。After I left the Masanja labor camp, I did not really get the freedom. I was required to report to the local police station. I was still tracked by undercover police and neighbors. In order to survive, I fled to overseas at the end of 2011. For a long time after I was free, I was still under the shadow of this persecution. Even under the warmest sunshine, I still feel the chill whenever I think of the brutality of Ma Sanjia. 迫害十年间，我先后失去妈妈、姐姐和爸爸所有的亲人，只剩一个人。今天在这里，我呼吁彻底结束中共邪党对法轮功的迫害，清算中共暴政的罪恶。法办迫害元凶江泽民。Here today, I call for help to end the persecution of the Falun Gong in China and bring Jiang Zemin to justice. Thank you. 好 ，OK， thank you, Miss Yang. Uh, as we just heard those testimonies, and also we know the persecution is still going on severely in China. We do urge the whole world, people around the world, especially the people here in the United States, to stand up and help us and help all to stop this persecution. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, I know uh, uh, our distinguished speaker may not stay here uh, to the end of 3:30,、uh, so we will proceed.、Uh, may not be based on the order of that.、Uh, before that. Today's Tuesday is a flight in day for member of Congress, so many of the Congress members are not here today.、Uh, some of them are really want to come here, so they send、uh, their statement uh, uh, of support.、Uh, we received three of them, but I need to mention one of the first uh, uh, Congressman Steve King.、Uh, he's the sponsor of today's events. He helped us reserve the room.、Uh, <coughs> he's sending.、Uh, He will fly in this evening, but he is sending his、uh, <coughs> a statement of support. If I may, I read this first, then I'll pass on to John. <coughs>、uh, Congressman King,、uh, he、uh, six months ago he also uh, sent uh, a proclamation statements to the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, 
to proclamate the trade-down movement in, in China uh, six months ago. <coughs> Today, uh, he sent in the letters, so uh, I have the honor to read that, uh, <coughs> to honor him uh, to help us to sponsor this event. Good afternoon. Today, as I do every day, I applaud and stand with all the brave participants, volunteers, and supporters of human liberty and among those, the trade our movement. You and I are part of seven plus billion people on the planet. And many of us are also among those that are living and doing the best we can to ensure the maximum amount of freedom to exercise of religions, adhere to our faith, engaging enterprise, live under rule of law, and the ability to raise our families as we see fit. These pillars of the free society that we so strongly defend here in the United States are written into our Declaration of Independence and into our Constitution, and we are called in this country to project those values around the world. And yet, we know that, well, that people are not free everywhere. In November 2004, the publication of night commentary on the Communist Party by the United States-based media outlet, the Epoch Time, revealed the brutal, deceptive, evil nature of the Chinese Communist Party. These night commentaries lead to the creation of the Tuidang movement. Tuidang literally means withdraw from the party. The Tuidang movement is contributing to the liberation of the minds of Chinese people and helping to peacefully break the cycle of indoctrination that the Chinese Communist Party uses against Chinese people. Tuidang allows individuals to renounce the oath they made to the Communist Party, the Communist Youth League, and Communist Young Pioneers. We stand with the Falun Gong, Christians, and others in the pursuit of freedoms and justice for all those in China. The magnitude of the persecution is just dif difficult to comprehend. And the denying of fundamental human rights, the God-given natural rights to worship as you please and to live as you please is unthinkable. For a group of people that is estimated to be 70 to 100 million people strong, to be denied those freedoms and then to, the, to be persecuted and tortured and also maligned, marginalized, and killed. It is absolutely unsinkable. Not to mention the horror and the evil of organs sold into marketplace for somebody else's benefit. It is an awful record of disrespect and contempt for human rights that comes out of the Maxim's government of Communist Party of China. Yet, I have hope. I encourage you to hope and pray. I pray for a day when such atrocity will not only be unthinkable, but will be completely removed from the face of the earth. I also look forward to the realization of a one free China, complete with the pillars of a free society. Together, we can look forward to and work towards that righteous goal. I believe you have an ally in the White House and that when President Trump looks across the Pacific, he sees not only the possibility of enhanced trade, but also the possibility of a true free China. Thank you for letting me participate along with you today. I take this opportunity to echo the words of Barry Goldwater when he said, I have great affections for the Chinese people, their culture, their skills, and their potentials. Stephen King, member of Congress. Thank you, uh, thank you, Congressman King and his uh, office help us reserve the room. Uh, next, uh, uh, I want to introduce uh, uh, Dr. John Lakowski. Dr. John Luxem will be the next speaker. You can either speak here or here, whatever <coughs> convenient to you. <coughs> yeah, uh, Dr. John Lakowski, he's the president of the Institute of World Politics.
which uh, educate master and the PhD of the working, so working professionals in our capital city. He is a renowned scholar on Russian and crimes of communists. Without further ado, John. I would like to thank all of you for coming here today to commemorate Human Rights Day and to bear moral witness. Um, I want to commend the leaders of the Tuedong movement and all those who have participated in it uh, in, in an effort to disassociate themselves with organized evil. Um, I uh, have a record of, uh, of having worked, as, as Congressman Rohrbacher said, during the Cold War against Soviet communism. Uh, and I always thought it was a mistake for us to believe that uh, we could turn uh, communist China against the Soviet communists and thereby uh, in, in, in some kind of a 19th century balance of power policy, which would somehow, uh, w which ended up, in my view, creating a moral confusion, saying that there were bad communists in the Soviet Union and good communists in China, uh, which I think uh, has turned out to be a, a, a conceptual problem that has really produced a, a, a strategic, uh, a, really a strategic disaster for the United States and the world and, and, the, and, and a huge, and, and in a way, a spiritual abandonment of so many people in China. Um, the, the former uh, Soviet human rights activist Andrei Sakharov, who was the inventor of the Soviet H-bomb, uh, but he turned into a human rights activist, said that there was a, that the Soviet Communist Party would never have peace with the West until it could have peace with its own people. And that means respecting and defending their human rights. And so right now we're seeing the rise of tensions between communist China and, and the United States and between communist China and many of its neighbors in East Asia. Uh, we're seeing a rising colonialist uh, and a, a, a foreign policy by China and uh, the, the strategic direction, the, the vast military buildup, the huge espionage operation, the intellectual property theft, all of this is intimately related to the fundamental uh, nature of that regime. And of course, it's, it's expansionistic and really imperialistic policy is one that is directly related to the central fact of political life in China, which is the illegitimacy of the regime. Nobody in China gave their consent that this regime should be governing them. And when you are an illegitimate regime, you have a fundamental problem, and that is fear of your own people. Uh, it's a massive internal security problem. And so everything from the system of informants, the Lao Gai, the, 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 the various different types of punishments, the persecutions, everything that we've been hearing about today uh, the organ uh, harvesting and so on, all of this is part of an internal security system to protect the perquisites of power and the wealth of the, of, of the gang that is in charge. One of the key elements of all of this system is thought control and speech control. All sorts of people in the United States and the West somehow deny that, the United that, 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 that China is still a communist country and believe that the ideology is dead. Well, whether people believe in all of the elements of the Marxist-Leninist with Maoist or other Chinese characteristics ideology, whether they believe in it fully or not, that ideology continues to be operational within the system because it's the essential instrument of thought control. It sets the standard against which deviationism is measured. And when journalists 
do not, uh, when they stray from the official party line, they are sent to ideological re-education schools in order to get them back into a state of, of, of conformity. And of course, this thought control and speech control is, is, is what ultimately makes the, the, the regime a totalitarian regime. It is, this strategy is related to their, the regime's psychological strategy, which is basically to, re, to, uh, to induce the people into a state of fear because, and, 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 and despair and futile resignation. When people, uh, when, when there is this kind of atmosphere of fear and you don't know who is an informant and who it is who is spying upon you and ready to turn you into the authorities so that you can be arrested uh, and, and, and undergo the terrible uh, tortures that our witnesses here before me were testifying to, um, you become atomized. This is the atomization of society where people are separated from one another to the extent that they can no longer trust anyone else and they're all alone. And so there are, how do you fight against this? How do you fight against this? Well, I submit that there are two things. One is that in order to fight the system of thought control and speech control, one has to do what the dissidents in the old Soviet bloc developed as a methodology. And this was to refuse to repeat any of the lies of the regime and to refuse to do this one day at a time. Just try to go through one day and not repeat any of the official lies of the regime. And then try to do it the next day. And then try to do it the next day. And the more people who refuse to, to participate in the official lies of the regime, the, uh, this, is an, this is one of those ways of quitting the party. The second thing, that, uh, that one can do here, of course, is to bear moral witness. And, and that means t telling the truth about what, about what is going on. Now, with, if inside, inside the, the, uh, uh, the Chinese communist regime, it's very difficult to do that. But it, 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 it remains for us on the outside to try to tell that truth and to try to convey it, particularly through the Voice of America and Radio Free Asia and other broadcasting methods and other communications methods, that the people, the suffering people of China, uh, the Falun Gong movement, the different religious movements within, within China are not alone. Because when you feel as though you're all alone, you are now in a state of despair and a state of uh, where of, of, of futile resignation. The the communist the communist party is like a coral reef, which is composed of millions of of tiny organisms, and it exists because the organisms continue to cling to one another, and they do so out of political opportunism, financial opportunism, or whatever. If they gave a party and nobody came, then there wouldn't be any party. If there's a communist party and nobody joins, there will be no party, no communist party. I believe it is our role to appeal to the consciences of those people who are in that party, like that Uyghur doctor who couldn't live with himself, who was haunted, because that haunting is, is ultimately listening to the voice of conscience that is, in the, that is there on the human heart, that is that little voice that tells you whether you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing, no matter what the, the Communist Party law says. And so it's, it is our duty to bear moral witness so that people won't feel alone and that ultimately they may gain courage. And maybe there will be a new, another day when millions of people will take to the streets in protest for this regime and its evils 
and, and, and maybe that party will decide that uh, it has too much to fear from a people who are rising up against them. I just want to thank you all for you bearing moral witness. I want to thank those who were testifying here beforehand for their incredible courage, and I wish you all got many of God's blessings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Forgive me. Uh, there are 320 million uh, courageous Chinese uh, cut tie with communist organizations. Uh, three organizations, Chinese Communist Party, which is about 4% of the populations. Uh, Chinese Communist, uh, Chinese uh, Youth League, Communist Youth League and Communist Young Pioneer. Together is a little bit more than 900 million. So 320 is about one third uh, of those members in, in China. <clears throat> okay, the, uh, the, the next, if I may, you are not. Oh, okay, okay. So, if I may, I, I want to in introduce uh, the president of uh, the Trade On Center, uh, Ms. Yi Rong. Uh, the Global Trade On Center, as this says, that uh, is, she is the, uh, the, the world leader coordinating the efforts of millions of participants who help Chinese to understand the crimes of communism and eventually post their withdrawal statements on the Trade On website. Okay. Well, without further ado, his, uh, uh, today's event is organized by the Pedang Center. Uh, Ms. Yi is the leader of our center. Please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. I'm very honored to speak on behalf of the Global Pedang Center about the Pedang movement. As of today, the Chinese people having created the Communist Party and its affiliated organizations has reached over 321 million. On behalf of our global volunteers, I'd like to express our sincere thanks to Mr. Dana Rorabak, who introduced the House Resolution 932 and express our thanks to the Congress expressing solidarity with the trade down movement, whereby Chinese citizens renounce the ties to the Chinese Communist Party and its affiliates. Thank you for your support of Chinese people's choice for freedom and calling for an immediate end to the persecution of Falun Gong practitioners, as well as to the persecution of all Chinese people. Tuidang, or Kui the Party, is the largest peaceful movement in China today that encourages Chinese citizens to publicly renounce their ties to the Chinese Communist Party and its affiliated organizations such as the Communist Youth League or the Young Pioneers. The publication of non-commentary on the Communist Party have in 2004, started the Tuidang movement. It has awakened the conscience of Chinese people. They started to separate themselves from the evil Communist Party. In this way, Chinese people have begun a journey returning to the traditional value. The greatest problem facing China today is a rapid decline of the moral character that has been destroyed by the Chinese Communist regime. Tuidang is offering Chinese people an opportunity to cleanse their conscience of communism and begin uh, on the path of renewing their moral character. Tuidang offers Chinese people something fundamental, freedom and hope. The CCP has used violence and terror to establish and maintain its power. It has used censorship to control the information and use the propaganda to brainwash Chinese people. Tuidang is breaking the cycle of forced brainwashing, spreading true information that helps Chinese people realize the evil nature of the CCP, and helping Chinese people to get of the, rid of the mind control of the CCP. Tuidang has opened the door of freedom for all Chinese people 
Tuedang is laying the foundation of fundamental changes in China, the kind of change that can only come from changing the hearts and minds of each Chinese. Tuedang is laying the foundation for a future China without, without the Communist Party. China today is experiencing great changes as more and more Chinese people quit the CCP. Tuedang is peacefully integrating the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Party is being swept away from people's mind. We have noticed the increasing attention and support to the Tuedang movement from the international community. I now take this opportunity to call for more support from the international community for supporting Tuedang is not only supporting freedom for Chinese people, but also supporting and protect, protecting our own global freedom and security. For we know the ultimate goal of the communism is to destroy the world. Let us work hard until the world largest the communist regime in China has collapsed, until the freedom and peace has finally come to China and the world. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Ms. Yi. <coughs> uh, if I may, uh, we have received a uh, four strong letter of support. Uh, uh, <coughs> I read one and I received two from Europe. Uh, I want to read briefly part of that, one of them. Uh, as you can see in the, <coughs> in the big screen, uh, a member of the European Parliament, uh, Estonian politicians, who was here in Washington, D.C. three weeks ago to receive 2018. Uh, Truman Reagan's uh, Medals of Freedom uh, from the Victim of Communism Memorial Foundations. And he is a uh, <coughs> long time fighter for uh, <coughs> uh, the, uh, the human rights and against communism. He actually sent me two things. One is uh, uh, <coughs> a supporting letters to the, uh, the Congress, U.S. Congress. I will read part of that. Also, he sent me a brief uh, speech asked me to read uh, to the audience today. And <clears throat> I will read part of that from, uh, uh, from MEP uh, Tunis uh, Kalim. Greetings to each and all of you gathered here at this forum. Your support for human rights, your dedication to helping the persecuted and the oppressed, and all the statements and discussions today will make a difference despite the seemingly indifference of the communist regimes in China. As someone who lived under communist regimes for half a century, I know how important this form of support from outside world war, not only as moral support for those of us who were working against the system, but also in pressuring the totalitarian regime. Thank you for your continued work which will someday enable freedoms to prevail in China. I also like to uh, read uh, a small part of his letters to the US Congress to support the House Resolution 39932. Dear Honorable Congressman and Congresswoman, I'm writing in support of House Resolution 932, introduced by Congressman Rohrabacher, expressing solidarity with trade on movement. Many European peoples have suffered from the inhuman crimes of communism until the Soviet Union's collapse in 1991. Unfortunately, communist dictatorships continue to exist in the world. First and foremost, the dealing, uh, the dealing with the communist China, we need to strike a clear balance between <coughs> pragmatic economic interests and the support for the basic freedom of the Chinese people. The Chinese communist regimes continues infiltrating into democratic countries, erodes not only the universal values we all have been upholding, human rights, freedom of belief and religions, but also undermines the future of Western's value-based civilization. The trade on movement is an impressive citizen's initiative that has the potential to weaken the Chinese Communist Party from within using peaceful methods. The movement provides a sign of hope which deserves our full support. The European Parliament has also supported Falun Gong practitioners in their 
appeals to enjoy the freedom of belief and end the persecution by the CCP, one of the most brutal persecution of the past 20 years. We encourage the U.S. House representative to adopt House Resolution 932. Please feel free to forward this statement to your colleague of U.S. Congress, respectively, <coughs> Tunis Kalim, member of European Parliament since 2004, Estonia, recipients of Truman's Reagan's Freedom Medals 2018, December 4th, 2018. <coughs> yeah, thank you for that. <coughs> Our next speaker is, is from the uh, U.S. Uh, <coughs> Commissions of International Religious Freedoms. Uh, uh, <coughs> yes, <coughs> the user uh, is, is, is uh, Dr. Uh, Dominic Nadi. He's a poly policy analyst uh, on China, uh, Indonesia, and Vietnam. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for the support of you, sir, in the past to our courses. Thank you, please. Go well, ahead. thank you for having me here. Um, as as uh, as you said, my name is Dominic Nardi. I'm a policy analyst at the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. And um, why don't I explain what that means? Because uh, you, sir, is not as well known in this town as maybe I think we would like. Um, you, sir, is um, our, our, we are an independent commission, and our commissioners are appointed by both the president and the Congress, so bipartisan and um, with both of those branches government. The USERF's mission is to elevate and promote religious freedom around the world, and we do this. We monitor religious freedom not based on U.S. standards, not based on the First Amendment of the Constitution, but rather based on international law, particularly the International Covenant, Covenant for Civil and Political Rights. Um, we monitor and report on dozens of countries, including China. Um, and then, we may, then in our annual report, we will make policy recommendations to uh, the State Department, the, the White House, and Congress. Our role, as we see it, is to act as a watchdog in religious freedom, to make sure that everyone else in the US government is taking the issue seriously and giving religious freedom the priority it deserves. So um, our mission, as we see it, is to speak the truth. If, if the White House or Congress, they may have other considerations like defense, uh, security concerns, we only have one goal, and that's religious, that's religious freedom. This year, in 2018, USERF celebrated its 20th anniversary uh, since the International Religious Freedom Act, or what well, we call it um, by its acronym, IRFA, uh, became law, and that law created our commission. It's... Um, yeah, that, was a, that, was a, that was a landmark act for religious freedom and uh, really helped set, uh, elevate it as a priority uh, for the U.S. government. In our first report at USERF, all the way back in 1999, we, we, we took note of China's crackdown on the Falun Gong in, in, in 1999. And we noted that Chinese authorities had sentenced uh, many Falun Gong practitioners to uh, harshly long prison sentences, uh, detained thousands of practitioners, and even brutally beat some of them to death. Unfortunately, as you all know, the situation has not gotten much better in the past 20 years. And in some ways, it's gotten worse, especially since Xi Jinping took over, uh, took over and came, uh, came to power in China. Uh, the crackdown, again, I don't think I'm telling you anything you don't know, the crackdown on religious freedom has really only intensified during the past four or five years. And the Falun Gong have been hit especially hard. Um, Falun Gong practitioners have been detained, harassed, and some of them, some, um, you know, as we heard from the moving testimony this morning uh, from practitioners, just truly horrible stories coming out of China. Uh, um, some of it, some of it would be, frankly, too hard to believe, such as the practices of organ harvesting from Falun Gong prisoners, if we didn't have such credible evidence of it from both uh, testimonies such as the ones we heard this morning. Also, uh, BBC did a recent investigative uh, piece on organ harvesting, and it, it does seem, in, uh, so the, the evidence seems pretty clear that this is happening, and it's, it's really, it's, 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 almost, it's almost, almost too much to talk, to speak, because it is so horrible. Um, I'm, some of you probably have seen recent reporting by Bitter Winter about the uh, infamous 610 office, which recent in, uh, 
um, which in uh, Lianang province has recently issued an, a directive to uh, crack down even harder on the Falun Gong and to crack down on media organizations that try to report the truth about the Falun Gong and the persecution that they're facing. So all of this, the situation with the Falun Gong, as well as other religious communities in China, um, uh, the Buddhists in, Buddhist in Tibet, we, uh, Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang province, uh, Catholic communities, all of these problems in China uh, have really forced Yusuf, Yusuf to uh, consistently recommend that the, state, the U.S. State Department place China as a country of particular concern under the International Religious Freedom Act. And this is, this is a special designation under the law noting that this co the country has engaged in systematic, ongoing, and egregious violations of religious freedom. And not surprisingly, given the scale of the problems in the country, the State Department has followed this recommendation for every year that it's actually implemented the recommendations. Um, unfortunately, this year, the State Department has, has, not, uh, put, has not issued uh, its, its, its designations under IRFA. And we, we strongly urge the State Department to do, that, do so um, as soon as possible. Uh, USURF has in the past worked with Falun Gong uh, survivors and their family members, uh, and they've provided us with information about what is going on in China and the ill treatment that they've received. And that's been invaluable in our reporting process. In our annual reports, we can actually include that information and make sure that the world knows about it. In conclusion, in the, in the face of everything that's been going on, not just with the Falun Gong, but uh, with other communities of faith in China, it's, it's difficult to be optimistic. It's difficult to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but but I, I, I want to just reiterate, reiterate that the Falun Gong movement is not alone, that you all have friends in the U.S. government. Uh, we obviously heard from Congressman Rabacher earlier today um, but you also um, have, a, but also the State Department is very aware, aware of the situation. We at USURF are aware of the situation. Um, as some of you probably noted, at the recent uh, Universal Periodic Review of China's human rights practices before the UN, the US government was one of the only countries to submit a question about, uh, to asking China about the Falun Gong. Um, the, uh, the U.S. government also has more tools to, to deal to promote human rights around the world and to promote religious freedom around the world, including uh, identifying uh, not just countries that commit human rights abuses, but also specific government officials who commit rights abuses. And we now have sanctions under the Global Magnitsky Act to sanction and target individual perpetrators. So these are things that, as you continue your advocacy on behalf of the Falun Gong, you might you might consider um, you might consider identifying specific individuals or uh, pushing for specific policy recommendations. We at USURF um, strongly recommend that the U.S. government pursue um, any and all options possible to uh, to hold the Chinese government accountable for uh, for its crimes and for its persecution of the, of the Falun Gong. So. Um, we are in December of 2018. There's a new Congress coming in uh, soon, early next year. And we at USERF um, just want to put out a call to make sure that uh, this, the new Congress, and especially the incoming, the freshman class, um, that they are aware of the issues in China that was religious freedom, particularly the Falun Gong, that they pay attention to the issues, and that they continue to pr promote uh, religious freedom, that they, um, that they continue to pass uh, resolutions as they have in the past, um, noting Congress's concern about the Falun Gong. We're able to do our work at USURF and, and for the, the broader U.S. government because of people like you, because of the, the, the testimony that we heard this morning, people coming forward to share their stories, provide us with the information, uh, so we know what's going on. And um, we, all, we, we, we realize that this is sometimes this is sometimes done um, um, at great risk to yourselves or to your family members. And I, on behalf of USURF, I just wanted to say that we appreciate your work. It's, it's invaluable to what we do. It's invaluable to our ability to, um, to act as a watchdog for the US government on religious freedom. And just know, know that it's appreciated and know that it informs uh, how we recommend the US government proceed. So. On behalf of you, Surf, and I want to uh, just again 
Thank you for your tireless advocacy efforts. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Dominic. Uh, you serve has been a very uh, concerned and supportive uh, to our causes on religious freedoms. Uh, actually, they designate uh, Communist China from the first year and on in the last 19 years as a country of uh, particular concern. And there are many uh, commissioners in the past, uh, Daniel Mark, Trina Lento Sweat, many are very supportive and uh, came to our uh, events to support. Uh, th thank you, Dominic. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I received, uh, as I mentioned, a few, few letters. Uh, I received uh, letters from the Germany and the largest human rights uh, NGO, uh, Germany, uh, support the support uh, to urge the U.S. Congress to, to support the, to adopt uh, House Resolution 932. Okay, I, I'll skip that, uh, but I'll provide to the member of medias. But there's an important letter I have to read. Uh, this is from Congressman Chris Smith. Okay, and um, <clears throat> he, he says, uh, Staff Director Paul was here earlier. He brought, brought in that, as I mentioned, Tuesday is not the day they fly in yet. So <clears throat> Congressman Smith, uh, who is the uh, co-chairman of uh, CECC, uh, Congressional Executive um, Commissions on China, is also the uh, subcommittee chairman of uh, Global Human Rights, um, he himself, uh, in the th last 38 years of serving as a senior congressman, he has held more than 50 hearings on China's on human rights-related things. So he's uh, the <coughs> number one leader in our Congress on China's issues, um, particularly on human rights and religious freedom. So he sent his letters in December 4th, dear friend, the trade-off movement has challenges millions of Chinese citizens to quit the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. Your movement over the last 14 years has changed the hearts and minds in China and freed so many from CCP's indoctrinations and corruptions. Although started by Falun Gong practitioner, the trade-off movement is for all Chinese people, regardless of religions, age, gender, Dalek, place of birth and ethnicity. The CCP's ongoing efforts to eradicate Falun Gong practice last, na last 19 years is a black mark on recent Chinese history. The crackdown by the Chinese government and the Communist Party is pervasive and severe, targeting religious groups, human rights law lawyers, ethnic minority in the laborers and dem democracy advocates. In response to this brutality, millions of people are quitting the Communist Party. They are reclaiming their God-given cons conscience with the assistance of the Tuida movement. We must never be silent about the atrocity experienced by the Falun Gong and others in China. And we must work to hold those responsible accountable for their crimes. <coughs> The Communist Party is to blame for tortures and arbitrary detention. They are to blame for the rape of Falun Gong women in prison. They are to blame for the harvesting of organs of prisoners. Even though the leaders in Beijing get angry when we bring up their persecution, we need to make sure they know that the world condemns their egregious human rights abuses. We will continue to hold hearings, continue to draft legislation, and continue to discuss human rights issues with Chinese diplomats and leaders. We will continue to ask our administration to speak publicly and shamelessly with the Chinese um, about the human rights and religious freedom and the persecution of those in China and around the globe. A better day is coming through your efforts and the efforts of many other courageous advocates for freedom in China. Sincerely, Christmas. <coughs> uh, if I may ask uh, Dr. Charles Lee to come up the stage too. Okay, uh, we have two more speakers. Uh, our next speaker uh, is a, a close friend of mine, Jeffrey Im. Jeffrey is the founder and the director of real R E A L responsible uh, <coughs> responsible 
for equality, equality and liberty. Okay. Uh, without further ado, maybe you want to come up to speak here. Uh, Jeffrey Im, thank you. Thank you for letting me stand up. It's good when you get older, you need to move around a little bit. Human rights begins with humanity and respect for human beings. Our hearts go out to those who witness today, who expressed the torture, who expressed the humiliation, who expressed the death and destruction of their families. Know that as fellow human beings, we mourn with you, we share your struggle and pain. We understand, even though we haven't been there, even though we didn't suffer your fate, as human beings, we understand what it means to suffer. It's incredible the levels of horror and crimes against humanity the people can accept as normal and just go on about their day as if nothing had changed. But we know, and the people who have conscience know, that we must change our culture to respect human rights, respect human rights and dignity for all people, which is the basis of the Tuadang movement. The Tuadang movement may stand for leaving the Chinese, Chinese Communist Party, but what it really stands for is truth, compassion, and respect for fundamental human rights. In the Tuadang movement, those millions who have left the Chinese Communist Party are one of the most remarkable examples of courage. They will be remembered in history as among the bravest defenders of human rights for all time, despite the danger, fear, and despair in being persecuted by the communist regime, they defiantly said, I am a human being. I am an individual with human rights and dignity. Among the 1.4 billion in China, the number in the Tuadang who have left the Chinese Communist Party are almost the same size as the population of the United States of America. I ask those in our media and those who report on this to pause. Consider any other human rights movement the size of the United States of America who would leave a totalitarian ideology. It is one of the greatest human rights stories in history. We urge the Chinese people to continue their courageous struggle for freedom from the communist regime. And we want them to know we are with you. Their courage should be an inspiration to the world. And we share their courage to reject the anti-human rights ideology, the Chinese Communist Party, and its growing efforts to influence not only China, but also the world. The world must not surrender to the Chinese Communist Party regime. The Communist regime does not intend to limit its control to only China only to the people it persecutes in the Falun Gong, the Tibetan Buddhists, the Uyghur Muslims, the Christian minorities, and the other Chinese that it persecutes. The Chinese Communist Party does not plan to stop just there. It plans to target the world. 
as the Communist Party regime brazenly told the United Nations in this November 2018 report, just last month, the Communist Party regime seeks to redefine human rights themselves, rejecting any universal road for human rights. In this universal periodic review, the UN Human Rights Council, the communist regime seeks what is calling human rights with Chinese characteristics guided by the dictator Xi Jinping. But the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was created 70 years ago on December 10th so that in no part of the world the powerful could claim the authority to deny the dignity and human rights of any individual. Not just an individual, not just a political group, not just a nation, but any individual anywhere in the world. This Universal Declaration of Human Rights is not agreed to just by English-speaking people, but by the Republic of China and every other major nation in the world, except for the communist nations of that time. The struggle for universal human rights for all is a struggle for human rights and dignity of every single individual because they matter as a fellow human being. This attack by the Chinese Communist, human, Chinese Communist Party on the universal human rights is a declaration of war on these universal human rights. We must stand united and determined to reject this world war on human rights. The idea that universal human rights do not exist attacks not just the Falun Gong or the persecuted people in China, but is a challenge to human rights of all people in every nation. So when we, when we say, we stand with you, we do stand with you. Your cause is our cause. Your struggle is our struggle. And the Tuadang is essential to the human rights of all people. We call on those in the continuing in the Chinese Communist Party to, to join the Tuadang and to leave the Chinese Communist Party. We call on them to support the Chinese people in their goal to free China now. We call for such change among those in the Chinese Communist Party, not as your enemies, but with compassion as your fellow human beings, with the universal human rights you share. We heard stories of evil today and cruelty. But evil and cruelty is not what we are born with. We have to be taught evil and cruelty. And just as we can be taught evil and cruelty, we can be taught respect, dignity, mercy, compassion, and the truth. We will win this war on universal human rights, not with hate and violence, but with compassion and mercy. We will win this world war on universal human rights, not with an upraised fist, but with an outstretched hand. We can and will change hearts. It may be hard to believe it today, and there may be those who believe there is no real reason for optimism. 
But in the darkness, a candle shines brightest. Believe in the future. Together, we will seek a world where human rights shall enjoy freedom of speech and belief and freedom from fear and want as we agreed to 70 years ago in these universal human rights. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm very happy that uh, I thought we lost uh, Trevor Lawton. Um, <clears throat> and Trevor Lawton, the New Zealand-based uh, authors, uh, filmmakers, speaker, politicians, he's on the phone. That is actually trying to do that is, is, is you people. And if you can keep on using your social media, keep on using your websites and media sites, to basically get the message out to the Chinese people how evil the Chinese Communist Party is, how destructive it is, um, and you can start, you can keep on making more and more people desert that party. We could peacefully avert World War Three. We could peace, peacefully avert what I think is one of the greatest looming disasters we face and that is a global war involving China and its allies against the West. They are planning for it. They are building up their navy and their military in the South China Sea with their Belt and Road Initiative. They are building up their power all over the world in Africa and Latin America, even Australia and New Zealand, certainly in Europe, and they are becoming the dominant world power. And that cannot be allowed to happen because we know how aggressive and evil they are. I know there are many people in the room listening to me right now who have felt the wrath of the Chinese Communist Party, who have suffered, who have had relatives who have suffered, who have been imprisoned, tortured and executed. And so I commend you to do everything you can to basically pull membership away from the Chinese Communist Party so that it is weakened, it, it, it cannot be as aggressive, so it basically eventually will start to crumble. Because if that does not happen, we are heading for a world of pain and grief on a major global scale. So I'm very, very, very proud to be associated with the people in the room who are trying to, are the only ones that I see are really fighting the Communist Party of China in a very peaceful manner, a very intelligent manner. And I'm very proud to be associated with that and very, very happy to offer any encouragement I can. And I'm very, very regretting, uh, deeply regretting, I cannot be there tonight. I was very disappointed when Charles told me the date of the event because I knew that was the only date in the whole month I could not be here, be there, but I'm certainly with you in spirit. Um, I have deepest respect for, for, you, for you and what you are doing, and I will do anything I can to assist in bringing the Chinese Communist Party to its knees because there is no greater threat to world peace today than that, that organization. So I want to thank Charles and, and and me, me and all the people there today. Um, I hope to be with you on your next occasion. Uh, I want to encourage you in what you do and offer you my congratulations. And so I'll, I'll close out with that statement, but uh, just want to say thank you very much. Well, we have the last, uh, but not the least speaker, Dr. Charles Lee, uh, will be the last one. Uh, Dr. Charles is the director of the public awareness uh, of uh, the Tweedown Center, based in New York. Uh, <clears throat> he's one of the key person have the the new uh, Tweedown reports, 2018 Tweedown reports, uh, working out. Um, <clears throat> then he uh, he has uh, very okay, very useful insights into the communist uh, <clears throat> characteristics and their tactic that we may bring them down. Charles. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I want to 
convey my great thanks to Professor Nian, uh, Nancy Nian, and all many people in Washington, D.C. for holding these events. You guys have done a lot of things uh, in D.C. area. Um, um, I, I have been working for the Tweedown Center for several years, and uh, I'm trying to, you know, um, make the public awareness uh, of this Twitter movement. But uh, so far, we still feel very much short of the reality in China and uh, the awareness of this movement outside of China. Um, Professor Ni has been visiting many congressional offices and together with other people, but we still have a feeling that this movement has not been, you know, vastly heard by the U.S. government and the U.S. public, so that's what we need to do. Um, uh, the major purpose of today's event of mine is to introduce this uh, uh, newest uh, edition of Tudon Report. This one, um, actually, um, we, we had a 300 million marks of uh, a March last year, actually, so it's a pretty uh, great event, and right now, uh, the the number of the people who have registered at the Twitter website is more than 320 million people. So, uh, this report actually uh, is an English version. It's slightly different from the Chinese version because it has some more focus on the relation between this movement and also uh, between the relation of this movement and uh, you know the U.S. government, U.S. Uh, United States, and uh, the other countries in the free world. And it talks about the, uh, the infiltration of the Communist Party uh, in uh, many countries, actually it's globally. They, the Communist Party have in, uh, has inf infiltration not just in the in, uh, United States, uh, in Australia, New Zealand, all these uh, European countries, but also in uh, Southeast Asia, uh, in South America, all different countries and Africa. So they have uh, controls of a lot of countries uh, in terms of e economy and other uh, means. So, um, actually, uh, just uh, last week, uh, there was a meeting between uh, uh, President Xi Jinping and uh, uh, President Trump. Actually, no, we, can, we should not call President Xi Jinping. He's a chairman, Xi Jinping, uh, in uh, Buenos uh, Aires, uh, areas in Argentina. They had a, actually a bought of two more months for the uh, increase of the tariff uh, on the goods import imported from China. And uh, it is critical to really remind people that the, 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 the evilness and uh, the inherited genes uh, characters of the uh, Communist Party, they always make promises. They always give you, a, you know, some kind of smiling uh, when you know, they want to cheat, cheat you and uh, deceive you. So this is uh, critical for people to understand that the pressure from the outside, from the Western countries, especially for the United States, is not only just in trade, but also in military and other culture and, and other things, should not be diminished, uh, uh, diminished at all. And in the meantime, um, we, we understand that if, if this game continues, you know, the, Ch the Communist Party will gain upper hands so we need to really remind everybody, and especially the, uh, the Trump administration and the U.S. Congress, that uh, we need to learn the lessons from the history, how the U.S. government had a very little understanding on the Communist Party, and then gave a lot of chances for the Communist Party to survive the crisis in, in history. So that's what we need to do. We need to really tell the truth. Looking back in history, we can see that Every time when the Chinese Communist Party had a crisis, the U.S. government always came to help. So the, the first one we, we knew, uh, we know that uh, during the World War II, um, the U.S. sent a delegates to Yang'an, where the Communist Party was, on, uh, was at. And then somehow the U.S. government was convinced that the Communist Party of China is a just power. It, can, it could bring the dem democracy into China. So they helped and supported it the uh, Communist Party instead of the Nationalist Party. So in, uh, in 1948, the Nationalist, Nationalist Party uh, Army almost you know, defeated uh, the, the Communist Party Army, but General Marsh Marshall uh, stopped Chiang kai shek from continuing attacking the, uh, the Communist Party armies. So then they had a chance to survive, and then finally just use up the, uh, the power in China. Then we come to 
1972, when the, uh, when the Chinese Communist Party at an exact time of the big, biggest cri uh, crisis it had in history because the vice president uh, of Ch Communist Party, Lin Biao, just flew to, uh, you know, trying to flew to Soviet Union and then uh, his plane uh, crashed. So Mao Zedong at that time had a very big crisis on the credibility of himself to controlling the uh, Communist Party. And also because of the Cultural Revolution, the uh, economy of China is almost collapsed at that time. However, uh, Nixon and uh, Kissinger, uh, Nixon, they, they went to China and then they established the relation with the Com Communist Party. So they saved the Communist Party at that time. And then we, we also know that in 1989, after the, uh, uh, the uh, Tiananmen Square massacre, within one month, the US president sent a delegate to China, sort of soothing off the, uh, the Deng Xiaoping, the dictator at that time, uh, as a guy, Chinese Communist Party, saying that, we're going to help you out, do not worry you're not going to be uh, in trouble at all because we, we are backing you up. So then we can see that in the, you know, within one or two years, most of those uh, European uh, communist governments collapsed, but the Chinese Communist Party is still in power. And then the, we came to the, uh, uh, the persecution of Falun Gong uh, in 1999. They continued to do these uh, heinous crimes uh, um, in human history for almost 20 years. So. And I want to also point out the uh, infiltration situation of the Communist Party into this country and other uh, countries in the world. Um, because at the time limit, I just want to uh, point out just a little uh, things, uh, a couple of things. One is the uh, espionage. We know that uh, in, in 2008, there were thousands and thousands of um, the communist mobs attacking the uh, Falun Gong practitioners in, uh, in Flushing, New York. Uh, that was a kind of drill for the Communist Party to sum up their fifth columns, we, you know, which is sort of the Communist Army in other countries, you know, referred as fifth column. They can sum up tens of thousands of their, their members in other countries attacking their enemies. And also, uh, according to the recent report um, from a company called um, Black Ops, they, they have uh, some data showing that there are more than 50,000 spies in this country, in addition to 350,000 of the students who are attending the uni universities and who are getting the financial aids from the Communist Party. The infiltration, we know that uh, the scale is much larger than this. Um, and the other thing is the cyber attacks. We, we, we have seen the uh, great advancement of the military technique uh, uh, on the Chinese Communist Party side, and they have they have got all the secrets in technology, military, and all those things you can imagine. They all have it. So the ma one of the major ways is cyber cyber attack. Um, they they have got into this you know uh, internet system of these uh, companies uh, in this country and get all these. Um, uh, secrets and also we find you know actually that's not uh, uh, secret because they in the U.S. government they are uh, about 20, mi uh, 20 million people's uh, personal data were stolen by the Communist Party and including you know their family members so this is uh, the, you know this is how they control and infiltrate uh, the other thing they have done is that uh, they they have corrupted the entire international uh, uh, business community, the uh, the morality has been ruined, and also they have been working on uh, on politicians around the world in you know just uh, to their own favor. So um, they used the Chinese market as the purchase uh, as the bargaining chips to to force those companies to comply with the party line and uh, control the freedom of speech of these people either inside China or even within, com uh, within the United States. Um, they have been helping this, uh, they have been getting help from these companies uh, technology in technology and monetary support. And then they have, you know, uh, gathered uh, a huge, uh, uh, huge uh, amount of wealth. The, uh, Mr. Lauder uh, just uh, talked about the, uh, the World War III three actually you know it could be a, a big war between the United States and uh, uh, the CCP regime um, but we hope that and uh, we believe that if this freedom movement continues and 
there should be no steel cities trap between the, uh, the U.S. and the China. Um, as long as we have the determination to uh, continue this trade on movement to let more people uh, know the truth about the evilness of the Communist Party, and as long as we have more and more people quitting this Communist Party with such a scale and a speed, and uh, the U.S. government and other f uh, free, country, uh, uh, free countries, they can keep the pressure from outside in the trade and uh, military and cultural th uh, things like that. We believe that the Communist Party will not have this opportunity to wage a war uh, to, ha to cause a huge or massive death of human beings. So this is um, like, this is like the, uh, everything is det determined by our will and how well we can keep our determination, or how well we can uh, keep doing what we have been doing. And we need to let everybody know that the evilness of the Communist Party and how we can win this war. So as I you know, presented this to the uh, Congressman General Rollerbach, the title of this Twitter report is uh, Declare the Victory, Declare the Victory over the unrestricted warfare waged by the Communist Party in China. So this is what we are doing and we hope that you know, everybody can know this and uh, can be on the side of the history. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you, Charles. <coughs> Before we uh, conclude the forum today and call for a group of photos in front of the uh, podiums, uh, let me conclude that <coughs> uh, about the uh, disclosing the crimes of communism, particularly human rights atrocity, we will continue to do that. We will do that more than once, uh, several times at the Congress. So. <coughs> Uh, we will do that. For the trade down movement, uh, uh, it's an encouraging one. Then uh, uh, Congressman Rohrabacher just told me that he will try to push, see whether Foreign Affairs Committee can consider the markup. Then <clears throat> even though we have less than two working weeks uh, for these sessions. But let's have our finger crossed with support with righteous thoughts to see whether <clears throat> there's an, any possibility to pass in that. <clears throat> then <clears throat> uh, we, we received many supports. Uh, <clears throat> many of the Office of Congressional, uh, <clears throat> they may send in the letters of support probably <laughs> after the events, but I will share with all the members of the medias. <clears throat> okay, the, uh, the trade on movement, it's a uh, massive uh, tidal wave, it's uh, ongoing. Uh, we are here to raise awareness, but no matter what there is ongoing, uh, Chinese people are so wise and brave today, they will take care of the communist problems. Okay, <clears throat> with the environmental support, that more support the most. Okay, uh, <clears throat> a lot of time people, <clears throat> uh, President Trump and others say that we want the American to be great again. And a lot of times that people may not know how the, how the regime or how the people look at the greatness, okay? <clears throat> the, the suffering people in the world or the regular people in the world see the U.S. great only when America stand up on the moral, high moral ground to reiterate the funding principle of our countries and to support these universal values, human rights, freedoms, that will earn the respect, earn appreciation to be great again. <clears throat> and thanks a lot. Uh, I want to thank a lot of people to help us. I want to invite the speakers um, who, are, who are still be here and working staff or whoever want to come to take a full group photo with us. Uh, I particularly, I want the Trade On Center to hold the reports. Then we will be in the group uh, re <clears throat> photos. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, we are right on time. Thank you very much. And give everybody a hand of applause. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's take a group photos. <clears throat>